This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Profit. Hello and welcome to the third annual CFO Strategies India Forum, organized by NASIBA, where CFOs from across sectors have gathered to discuss, debate and evaluate current market conditions, future growth and opportunities that await. NASIBA has been uh, in India for the last three years and we've been hosting uh, CIO strategies events and CFO strategies events for the last three years and we've been pretty successful. At this event what we do is we bring in only the C-level decision makers in the from the financial industry which gives them an opportunity to network, re-educate with the peers, keep them updated with the, the new topics, the relevant uh, topics for the industry and make sure they make key decisions for the industry. So. Among the various discussions was an interactive panel discussion on financial reporting standards and if there is a need to get them at par with global financial reporting norms. Let's take a look. Thank you all very much for joining us here. We have with us a very special panel talking about the evolution of financial reporting standards. Let me start by introducing our guest to you. We have uh, Mr. Jamil Khatri, who is the Head of Accountancy Advisory Services at KPMG, Dr. Paritosh Basu, who is a Group Controller at SR Group, Mr. Sanjay Jain, who is a CFO at uh, Chirup Telecom. Gentlemen, thank you all very much for joining us uh, here today for this uh, discussion. Let me uh, open this, uh, this, this panel by asking this uh, a very simple question for all of the, the people out there. Let's talk about the fundamental role of financial reporting, FRS. Uh, perhaps we can talk about uh, the existing uh, gap standards that are there, as well as the new IFRS that is the topic of our discussion today. You're a consultant. Let's start with you. I think whichever way you look at it, uh, financial reporting standards are supposed to provide a framework uh, within which transactions are reported to external stakeholders. Uh, and I think uh, in that context, we have been following a framework for some time. The question now is that we are trying to move to a new framework, which is the international financial reporting standard. Uh, and, and I think one of the points uh, that we should debate is really what, what does this shift in framework uh, bring in terms of benefits, challenges, and opportunities. Uh, but in a nutshell, I think uh, the, the standards only give you a framework within which you report your transactions to external stakeholders. Okay. Moving on from that, what exactly is the IR, IFRS? What, is the role that does, what role does it play? And why would a company want to switch to that? I, I think, uh, uh, you know, this whole IFRS framework is, first of all, both a regulatory compliance issue uh, because of several commitments which have been made by India at two organizations like the International Accounting Standard Board. Uh, we now have a commitment to converge with international financial reporting standards by a given timeline, uh, which is 2011 for, for kind of certain defined kind of companies. Uh, on, 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 a, on, a, on a more practical note, I think as Indian companies go more global or have operations which are global, have aspirations which are global, have stakeholders like investors which, who are global, uh, I think you know, the, given that the entire world is moving to the international financial reporting standard would all go well for Indian companies you know, who want to go global because then you know, they can be on a platform which is well understood uh, in the markets they want to kind of operate in. Dr. Basu, let, let me come to you. You, yeah. you, know, you run an Indian company over here. Um, internationally, perhaps, you know, it's, you know, the, the reasons for it perhaps are more clearer. You have uh, had two years of experience since you actually converted to IFRS at the SR Group. Why did you guys go about doing that? For an Indian company with global operation, but primarily Indian company, why would you do that? The issue here is that we, uh, as SR, uh, we are present in about 11, 12 countries and many of the continents. Most important thing is that when you deal with native gaps, you have various differences, as Sanjay was mentioning about it. And coming to uh, an organization which is predominantly India-based organization, which have to go abroad and now work for various financing and funding operations, etc., yet at the same time, continuously increase the base there. You have to find one platform, one framework, one language to report the financial performances. And uh, in that position, the whole balance sheet and profit and loss account has to be acceptable to the investors spread over all over the world. So in that kind of a situation, IFRS perhaps is one of the languages which is emerging in the world. And it is being accepted in such a manner because it is having the flexibility. 
And the entire body, which is working on IFRS today, is trying to appreciate and adopt uh, some of the peculiarities and country-based issues. And in course of time, I personally feel that the whole world will emerge into one kind of a situation of reporting. Okay. Jimmy, let me toss this across to you. I mean, we, right now we have, you know, we're on a journey here and Indian standards are as well to move towards reporting as per the IFRS. Now, you, you've had a lot of experience in actually helping companies uh, in make this transition. What are the biggest risks of making such a, tra such a transition in your experience? Sure. I, th I think, uh, you know, one of the, the first thing, as, as, you know, everyone in this room should realize is that moving to IFRS uh, is not just a change in accounting standard, it's actually a change management program. From a mindset perspective, a lot of the accounting that Indian companies have been doing in the past is based on a particular way of accounting, uh, whether it is historical cost, whether it is guidance available in the way things have to be done. And I think we will now move to a very different framework which requires a lot more use of fair value, for example. Uh, we will see a framework which will require a lot more judgment in terms of application. And I think one of the biggest challenges I feel is really getting people within the organization, not just the finance team, but people across businesses, you know, geared to work with the new system, understand the numbers which come out of the new system, and, you know, be able to run your business using the new system. Uh, I think the second kind of biggest challenge really is the ability to even produce these numbers on a credible basis. Uh, because, you know, the information systems that companies have, both in terms of IT systems as well as processes, are geared to produce one set of information and that is going to change in the future. Now, you can produce for one quarter, two quarter, for one, you know, as a one-time affair, you can produce these numbers outside of the system. But unless this reporting is embedded into the way you kind of produce the numbers, you can't do it on a sustainable basis uh, without making fundamental errors. So I think the two big points in my mind would be training and awareness. Uh, to a different kind of a framework. And the second thing is making sure your systems and processes are geared to give you the data which you need to produce these, uh, this information on a sustainable basis. All right, let's now move on to uh, Dr. Basu over here. Dr. Basu at SR Group, we have a lot of experience in uh, doing, uh, uh, converting into IFRS, a lot of practical issues that you've dealt with hands-on. What would you say the biggest challenges in actually doing this from your practical experience that you have? The most important thing in IFRS, as you know, to identify what are the changes we are going to have between the Indian GAAP or any other native GAAP to IFRS. The first and foremost important is that it is substance over form. Second is extreme trans transparency and no protected uh, reporting. Then we have...